In this video, I want to answer the question, what is the grief cycle? Or DABDA. Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross worked with terminally ill patients, and she researched the way people deal with bereavement, grief, and loss. She documented her work in her 1969 book on death and dying. In her book, she puts forward a widely used description of the way people handle grief in five stages. First, denial, then anger, then bargaining, and then depression, and then acceptance. And it's the initials of these five stages that give us the common term that's used for this model, DABDA. D-A-B-D-A. -D In the denial stage, people almost literally can't believe that this is happening to them. And therefore, they almost act as if it isn't. They don't act as if they take their situation entirely seriously, and they try to get on as if it's not happening. But once they come to terms with the fact that it is happening, they get angry. Often, they take their bereavement or their own status as being terminally ill as a personal insult. They want to know, why is it happening to me? They rage against it and they become often irrational and often treat the people around them with discourtesy, even when the people around them are trying to be supportive. Next, they move into a bargaining stage. They try to strike a deal with themselves or with their own concept of their maker that says that if I do this, can I get that? If I work hard at this, can I get more time? And what they're struggling to do is to come to terms with their bereavement, to come to terms with their situation, and to find a way to get something out of it. But of course, the reality is really starting to dawn on them. And when it does, they start to feel that they can't face it. It's not just that they can't face it alone, no amount of support will help, and they move into a depression stage. But the human spirit marches on. And eventually, we work our way out of that depression into acceptance. We know it's going to happen. We know it's real. And we start to feel ready for it. We start to draw back from fighting against it, from struggling, from trying to make bargains. And we embrace the next stage. Which for someone who is suffering a bereavement is to move on with their life. But for someone that is terminally ill, it's to get on with dying. It's it's to actually embrace the very last stage of their life. In another of our Project Management in Under Five series, we looked at how Cynthia Scott and Dennis Jaffe adapted this model to create a model for change. But we don't have to look very deeply into this model to see that it actually applies in those five stages of denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance to organisational life and to organisational changes. But we have to ask, why is this? Well, I suppose the reason is because our ancient ancestors did not evolve in a world of corporate transformation. But they did evolve in a world of illness, injury, grief, loss and bereavement. And therefore, our brains have evolved the systems that we need to deal with them. And those systems operate in a mode which Kubler-Ross described. When we're in a world of organisational transformation, our brain doesn't have a system for that, so it finds the best system it can and applies it in the best way it can, which is why people often seem to respond in a disproportionate way to organisational change. 
But I believe that we can see those stages play out. People do deny that the change is going to happen until it does. And then they get angry about it. And then and they say, well, you know, hang on, do I have to get involved in this change? The bargaining stage. And when they realise they do, they get fairly miserable about everything they're about to lose until gradually they work their way through it and they accept that change. Now, towards the end of her life, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross expressed some concern that people take her model too literally. She expressed concern that she didn't uh, write about a more fluid approach. And it's true that people don't always follow those five stages sequentially in an organised manner. We're not like that. And it's also true in organisational change that we don't always follow those five stages in an organised manner. However, I think what we can say is definitely true is that when you're dealing with organisational change as an outcome of your project, you can expect all sorts of behaviours from people. And among them is denial that the change is going to affect them and a kind of head in the sand, ostrich-like approach. You can also expect people to get angry and upset. You can expect people to try to argue with you and bargain. And you can expect people to get seriously sad and upset about the changes you're imposing. But likewise, you can expect that after a while, people will accept the changes. So the grief cycle is something entirely relevant to us as project managers. And I encourage you to learn about it, and to understand it and to adapt your project and change process to your understanding of the grief cycle. Mm -hmm.